red chip uh, in three different way so first of all uh, let's uh, start uh, the easiest ways to load the data um, let's say you have a data file in your local computer what you can do is uh, you can go to the load data the section here uh, in your console uh, in your Redshift editor there's something called load data click on that and then you get the terminal you can there are two options uh, one is uh, from s3 bucket other one from your local uh, from your local file so what you can you can select your local file and then give the local location so I'm going to randomly select one of those files yes and then it's only maximum is 5 MB guys uh, and stuffing all and then click next and then you can create a new table so basically I'm here I'm gonna load the existing table or new table I'm gonna create a new table I'm gonna where I'm gonna my cluster and the database and the scheme I'm gonna select public and gonna give a new table give a name to the new table let's say new table that's it uh, nothing has to change here guys we are not going to define sort key or anything like that uh, we are not going to change any of those here we just because this is a just demonstration to how to load the data uh, we click on the create table this will show that successfully create the new table and then I which just going to click on the load data it will take couple of uh, minute guys to load the data it's basically depend on the size of the file so it is successfully load the data let's uh, see so our file is uh, the table that I created was uh, call new table this is a new table so I'm gonna scan select this table uh, and just run C and show the data that's the one way to do guys uh, this is uh, just from the bucket uh, in the local computer when you do this you might get an error saying that uh, you need to define your s3 bucket uh, for temporary uh, location so in that case you can click here this part and go to account setting and make sure you have a, a s3 bucket for temporary data when you are loading from this is uh, loading from a uh, local computer another way we can load the data is uh, from uh, through uh, the same method we can go to load from the s3 bucket I'm going to show that to you as well you guys uh, I'm going to show that as well guys so you just have to go here and then select your bucket uh, uh, I'm going to here and then select your bucket and select where file is I'm going to select my file and choose and then it's automatically pick up everything else so and then I'm going to load it to existing table uh, so um, what I'm gonna say I'm gonna select my schema and select a table there's a table called uh, flight data I'm gonna and I'm gonna select my role this is a default role guy whenever you create a cluster uh, it will automatically uh, uh, come up with the uh, uh, basic uh, IM role which is more than enough to you to load to use to uh, which more than enough to uh, load the data it will create a query it says successfully load the data to file let me check so if I go here this is my file table it's not, nothing to show here up to now no row but if I run there should be five rows coming I'm just gonna run it again data is coming so all good that's the second way to load the data um, now I'm going to show how to load the data using uh, uh, AWS Glue. 
so this is uh, there are two way to uh, there are couple of ways you can use uh, AWS glue, uh, glue to load the data so I'm gonna first use the visualization method uh, just using the source table so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna select one from S3 bucket and then uh, I'm gonna say the red shifts is, as my target and then I'm gonna say create and it will create a job so I'm gonna give the job a name say I'm gonna say uh, red shape load data demo and then I'm gonna here I need to select my bucket again so I'm gonna get going to get the same location that I have the same file so basically when we are done with this one there should be a 10 rows there I can infer a schema from there as far far k file and then mapping you don't have to do anything here if you are deleting a column or some sort of adjustment to your uh, file, uh, data before you load it to the uh, red chip you can adjust it uh, you can do it here but uh, I'm not going to do any transfer uh, uh, any changes to the original data so I'm not going to do any changes here then I'm going to go here uh, to my red chip and select my red chip and then red zip connection this is uh, something that really important guys uh, i'm going to show you how to create this uh, red chip uh, uh, red chip uh, connection so let me take you to the glue again and then go connection and then connection go here create a connection and then give you a name of to the connection and then uh, here if you go to your redshift call cluster there's a jbdc url you just copy this one and uh, you're going to insert here uh, there's nothing to and use use your username and password when you're creating your cluster you give a name uh, a username and a password for that please uh, have that ready and make sure you put your username and password and then just uh, click on the uh, create connection that's all uh, that's all here guys after you create your connection make sure you can go here and select this and then action and there's a button to test the connection so you can test your connection as well before uh, even uh, you need to select your uh, glue uh, role uh, you can create a glue role uh, uh, glue role such as like full access uh, uh, to the all the aws services something like that would be uh, you can uh, create something like that or you can have a limited access one as well so if i click here start testing the connection guys this is going to take a bit of a time so because of that i'm going to go back to again the my job so uh here I select that connection that I already created. This is the database uh, and schema is public. That's where uh, if I go to our Redshift cluster, this is pub de de deployed and then schema public. Then this is a table. So you need to make sure. Now next thing is choose the table. So my table is going to be flight data that's all guys so I'm gonna say append you can do merge you can truncate so that's mean delete the data and load it again and drop and recreate so I'm gonna say uh, flight data append so that's all guys and another important thing is we need to uh, if you want to save your course go to job detail and uh, you need to select uh, a glue role default role would be fine guys here and then uh, you can reduce the number of uh, workers so i'm going to give it two because this is a small file and i don't want to spend a lot of money as well so two should be enough for a, like a small job but uh, it's depend on the how big your file is uh, so this is a run, job run uh, job timeout i'm going to skip as default it's like 48 hours uh, anyway guys this is not going to run 48 hours uh, so I'm gonna save my job. It take a couple of minutes. 
the same time let's see the connection you can see that the connection is successful so now that's done so we are going to now uh, start running our job so click on before run I'm going to show you again the how many columns are there in row sign there it's only five rows guys so now when I finish that job it should be Let's put uh, count and see how many oh, okay guys the job is running let's see yeah so no data is here that because guy uh, when I run the uh, query uh, I ran the this one as well so when you running run all this will delete the all the data from that so now what gonna happen when I run this uh, new one gonna load the data there's nothing here now it's gonna load the five uh, data points so let's go and start running the our job so it says successfully start the job so from here from job monitoring section we can see the job how it's running so start uh, so start running now it will take a couple of minutes a uh, minute uh, to finish guys so meantime the next uh, how how we can use a notebook to create a uh, run, update uh, uh, AWS uh, Redshift uh, data warehouse let's so I'm gonna basically you can start creating a new uh, notebook, pro, notebook from scratch or you can use existing one so I'm gonna use existing one guys it's a very similar I just created like a uh, couple of hours ago uh, you can copy paste the same code or I'm gonna upload the file to uh, github uh, you can download it from there and then upload it so here that I'm going to take my file, upload it and then I'm going to create my job. So I'm going to give a name, uh, red shift notebook demo and then I'm going to select a role again. The so I'm gonna say glue that's it guys so I'm gonna start my notebook so it's gonna take a bit of a time to notebook to get ready so meantime we can check whether our what uh, how our job is going still running guys so okay it's completed let's go and check our red chip we have five five data points guy can you see five rows okay guys so let's see uh I'm gonna uncomment so that next time won't have any impact on from that and then see whether our notebook ready yes guys our notebook is ready uh, so important thing here is that uh, uh, you need to uh, select uh, set your connection so basically this is the connection that we created earlier so you make sure whenever you wanted to upload uh, data from a notebook if you create a new one uh, this is the magic uh, the command that they are using uh, that is used to uh, adjust this job detail uh, if you go here if you want to adjust configure any of the detail use the magic so uh, we need to make sure in advanced property section we have our connection ready so that's what uh, we are doing here so you have to make sure this is done 
uh, if it's not there you need to add it again and uh, run back again um, because it's import without this with notebook will not work so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start so I have uh, reduced the number of workers to two again and version is three so I'm gonna run this one okay and then this is just uh, if you are taking the data from data catalog so no I'm gonna take the data from s3 bucket and then I'm gonna load it back to a Fanda data frame uh, uh, PySpark data frame from a dynamic data frame so it's gonna take a bit of a time to run guys because uh, I have a less number of workers it's running so meantime we can clean up the other cluster okay no data is there guys now everything is clean up so you can from here you can select whether uh, I run one query or run everything okay uh, uh, so now uh, we wait into our notebook to run one run so it's still the second one is running guys this is because uh, we have a less number of uh, workers that's why it's taking a bit of a time but uh, it's normally is fast so it's done and if you run the show data you should get the data as well since uh, we created back to the uh, normal uh, normal data frame we need to create back again to dynamic uh, uh, frame to upload it to uh, Redshift so this is my uh, name public public uh, database name da table name this is database name and this is the connection then this is refer to the connections option this is the temporary location you can refer any s3 bucket uh, in the same uh, look uh, same uh, region so that uh, it can uh, uh, save the file before uploaded to uh, uh, Redshift basically what uh, this notebook connection does it is temporarily upload to s3 bucket and then copy to uh, redshift that's what going to happen in uh, inside this command so let's check uh, whether our data is there nothing is there guys so now i'm going to run my last command to upload the data it's going to take a uh, only a uh, 30 second guys to load the data okay so everything is loaded let's uh, check whether our data is there go to our cluster and then you can see guys data back come again we have five rows of data um that's all guys that's uh uh, that's all in this video guys uh, how to load the data to uh, redshift using uh, glue and then glue visual way and glue notebook and then s3 bucket and and from your local computer as well basically four way of uh, loading the data uh, to aws redshift thanks guys for watching